a critical week ahead on Capitol Hill as Congress stares down a September 30th deadline to keep the government funded and avoid a shutdown. At the same time, the House Oversight Committee is gearing up for Thursday's first hearing in the Biden impeachment inquiry. Long Beach Congressman Robert Garcia sits on the House Oversight Committee. He joins us live now from Washington with more. Congressman, welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right, so let's start with talking about that potential shutdown. Today, the Senate Republican and Democrats came to an agreement that said, here's our plan, we can do this and keep the government open. So far, House Republicans have not gone along with that. What's going on behind the scenes, and do you feel like a shutdown at this point is inevitable? Well, look, I mean, first, um, everyone but the House Republicans agree. Senate Republicans, Senate Democrats, the White House, House Democrats, we all agree we want to avert a government shutdown. Uh, in California alone, we're talking about 200 thousand federal workers, uh, people, veterans, uh, armed services, folks that are really depending on services, people that protect us every single day, and to shut down our government for a, a fringe group in the House um, is really shameful. I mean, the truth is, is that um, Kevin McCarthy needs to get his caucus under control in the House. Uh, he has, of course, now just a few more days to try to put together a plan. But unfortunately, uh, right now, who is leading um, that caucus are folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gates, and they're not interested um, in any sort of a plan to actually save these jobs and, and really help the economy. We know that a government shutdown would be very damaging to the economy. Look, vast majority of, of, uh, of Republicans, I think, want to do the right thing. But unfortunately, that caucus right now is controlled by the extremists in, in, in the House. So in five days, do you foresee that, in fact, the government will shut down? And for the average person out there, how will that impact them? What will that look like if the government does not avoid this shutdown? Right. And so a couple of things to remember. I think one is we I, I'm very hopeful that we don't have, of course, a shutdown and we're working really hard um, in, in ensuring that that doesn't happen. But at the end of the day, this is uh, Kevin McCarthy is the speaker. He has to control and get those votes. Certainly, Democrats are not going to be voting for any shutdown. As far as what that's going to look like on the ground, it's important to remember for viewers that this is a federal government shutdown. State government, local government moves forward as normal. But essentially, the federal government, for the most part, either shuts down or really slows slows down. That means that services that people rely on are going to slow. That means that folks within our military will be working most of the time without pay. That means that critical federal services like food programs, SNAP, could be delayed or eliminated. And federal firefighters could be also out there on the job not getting compensated. And so the, the whole of government either stops or slows down. And it's, it's shameful, especially to the men and women that are dependent on their services, whether they're veterans, whether they're serving in the military, to not be able to get a paycheck because extremists want to dramatically, essentially, um, reimagine what government actually looks like. And so vast majority of the United States, vast majority of Congress is on the same exact page. Yeah. We should not have a government shutdown. Let's hope not. Okay, let's, let's switch to topics now and ask you about the impeachment inquiry. The first uh, inquiry, the, the first hearing is this Thursday in that oversight committee. You are on that committee as mentioned. So take us into the room on Thursday. What does that look like? Well, look, I think first it's important to note and to remind folks that there is um, zero evidence uh, that links President Biden uh, to anything that Hunter Biden did. And we, we all believe, by the way, as Democrats, that Hunter Biden should be held accountable for any crimes that he uh, may have done. He's going through a process right now, uh, just like Donald Trump should be held accountable for his indictments and, and, and the things that he is going through as well. But we know there's been zero evidence so far that the president has done anything wrong. Um, we also know that um, many um, uh, in the House, especially some of the more extreme vo voices, have basically said and linked, they're trying to link this impeachment inquiry to the shutdown and, and in order to get uh, uh, you know, that uh, some sort of resolution on the shutdown, we also have to have this impeachment inquiry, which makes absolutely no sense. So I think at the end of the day, Hunter Biden is a private citizen. Um, clearly, he's being investigated. He needs to be. Um, but he is, was not in the White House. He didn't work in the White House. And so I think all of that will be um, will brought to the table on, uh, on Thursday and in the future. But we're going to be very honest about telling the truth, pushing back on distortions, um, and hopefully getting um, for the focus back on actually funding the government. Why we're having an impeachment inquiry two days before the government is about to shut down and people are going to lose jobs and their livelihoods, to me, is absolutely crazy. Uh 
So you're also a, a part of the Biden reelect. You're one of his favorite surrogates. Um, and, you know, it, it, the poll numbers recently haven't been great. There was this ABC Washington Post poll that a lot of people think is an outlier that shows President Trump at 51 percent, Biden at 42. But even the rest of the polls show that this race is essentially tied uh, with Biden running against a guy who's got 91 criminal indictments. Uh, and longtime Democrats, Bill Maher, James Carville, who both want the Democrats to win, talked about this on Bill Maher's podcast. Here's what they had to say. Let's assume the election was November the 3rd of this year. Oh, and, and they said the candidates are Joe, Joe Biden, the Democrat, Donald Trump, the Republican, uh, Joe Manchin and Larry Hogan, no labels, and Cornell West. Mm. Trump would be a betting favorite. At some point, perception becomes reality. And look, do I think he can do the job? Absolutely. He cannot run for president. He'll look bad in the debates. It's just, it's too, it's too much. What do you say to Democrats who want to beat Donald Trump, but that are fearful that Joe Biden is simply too old and that the electorate will reject him because of that? We're better off with a younger candidate who can be out more, talk to more people, do more events, be more vibrant and not have that issue. Well, what I say is that we're going to win with President Biden. Uh, President Biden already beat Donald Trump one time. He's the one person has done that. Uh, he also has, and I believe, has an enormous amount of wisdom and leadership. I mean, people talk about folks and their age. I'm grateful that he's been vice president, that he's been a senator, that he's led this country for decades, that he has wisdom and experience. So look, every campaign is going to be tough and close. We have a, a very close electorate. But at the end of the day, uh, we're confident the, that the Biden-Harris team has the results results around lowering drug prescription drug prices, results around infrastructure law, results around climate investments. And these are the things that are going to matter in the election. We're, we are still uh, a year plus away. Um, and at the end of the day, this, the, this election is going to go in the president's favor. He's brought stability to this country. Um, and I, and, I, I'm not, and the, the, the Republican nominee is going to be Donald Trump. I mean, there is no question at this point if that's the direction. And, and we are going to beat a person that's been indicted 91, uh, uh, 91 different counts. And this is just um, really sad to see that the country uh, and, and the nominee for one of our major parties is actually going to be Donald Trump. Well, as they say, uh, time will tell. Uh, so we'll all be watching. Uh, Long Beach Congressman Robert Garcia, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you both.